Are you concerned about all this corruption being misgendered as conspiracies? Well, don't you worry. Sit back, relax, and join in the conversation as we talk with today's guest. Welcome to another LSB Film Productions podcast with your host, Chris Brooks. Hello and welcome to the channel. It's me, Chris Brooks, for another LSB Film Podcast. Today I'm joined with Michelle and there are other people in the, the room, so we might hear a few hecklers, but it's predominantly Michelle that we're speaking to. Um, Michelle is on here because both Michelle and Alison and Kirk and probably more in the team are fighting for justice, basically. There's a poor senior gentleman called Donald who has been put in prison um in up in scotland and it's very unjust of how and what's continued to happen since so basically we're going to talk about this so welcome to the show everybody hiya Uh, Hiya. 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 um so tell me a little bit about who donald is well the point of this story really um i I think is, is exposing the corruption within the prison service and the judiciary on a whole Okay, um, there's no process of law here, fraud, torture, endless violations. And um, Donald has been subjected to, to this principally for standing as a living man and not as the corporate dead entity. I know not everybody will understand that, but I'll try to go into a little bit of detail, not too much, but later. Um, now, Donald's been locked up um, in Scotland on fraudulent paperwork um, since January 2023. Um, I'd like to just describe um, Donald a little bit, paint a bit of a picture of him. He's a really lovely, lovely man. Um, we all love him. He's, he's in his 60s. Um, he's had, had no previous convictions, um, no issues with the authorities. He's uh, well-educated, polite and, and humble. Um, and he's a firm believer that at the moment we're in a spiritual war here. You know, I'm, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Chris, yeah. yeah. I mean, we can see, can't we, clearly um, how it's all playing out in general, you know, across the whole country and the world. So it's clear that we're in a spiritual war and this is what um, Donald sees and we all see. And he's standing as the living man under trust law, which is God's law. But um, unfortunately, he's being forced and trying to be moulded into this corporate dead entity. And, and, and in the process of this, he's being treated less than an animal. Mm. Now, um, he had fully expressed his status as a living man in, um, to the Crown Corporation um, before kidnap, and I will call it kidnap, um, and he's been tortured to break his spirit um, for commercial reasons, and, and that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, it all comes down to money, doesn't it, at the end of the day? So why yes, do you think this is um, happening then? What, what has spurred this on? Well, we haven't seen him since, I say, 18th of January um, 2023, when he's taken from his home um, in in South Yorkshire, um, first to HMP Perth, um, and he was held there until February 2024, and then to HMP Greenock, um, and he was was there um, until yesterday, okay? So he was moved there yesterday to HMP Kilmarnock, um, now, considering the track record of SPS, we're extremely worried about him and his well-being there in Kilmarnock at the moment. Um, you know, his, his health, his well-being, because of the way that he's been treated up to now. Um, now, at Greenock, we can say categorically that he was 23 and a half hours in lockdown most of the time. That half an hour that he got out, extre- it was, should be an hour, so breaking all their own regulations. It was um, out for about half an hour and, um, you know, and given a, a little amount of space to walk around in, you know what I mean? So the containing it, the squeezing it, um, it's, it was deprived of stimulation, light, fresh air. Um, and deprived of nutrition as well, you know what I mean? And they tried to curtail his nourishment. Um, the guards and the inmates, well, I'll just say it like this, as it is, there's a fine line between where a guard starts and finishes and the inmates start and finish because they're one and the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the prison officers encourage the inmates to bully him. He stands out like a sore, th- sore thumb, you know, um, as you can imagine. A fish out of water. It- yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, he's over 60, you know, um, you know, polite, he doesn't swear, he doesn't use bad language, 
Um, you know, I don't like to be judgmental, but at the end of the day, they knew this when they put him in there. Um, most of these inmates are under 30. Um, Greenock, I'm speaking about Greenock because he's only just been moved, is a community-based prison. So all the um, guards mm. and the prisoners, they know each other in actual fact, you know what I mean? Mm. So, the, the, you know, they have a, an easy time of it. So they moved him from, you know, into there purposely, really. It's a high security prison and the the so-called, um, you know, charge that they put on him was for reported fraud. So, you know, where there's violent offenders, you know, people that have, you know, committed severe offences, violence, rapes, etc. Um, all sorts of, um, you know, heavy duty stuff. And then they've got Donald in the middle of all that. Um, Green are also as a condemned building, even by their own standards, they say it should be bulldozed. There was sewerage coming out of, through the sinks. So he was forced to live in these subhuman um, circumstances. You know, I mean, 23 and a half hours a day. Um, you know, they've tried all sorts of things to break his spirit because um, anybody that's listening to this will know that it's all about contract and will do anything to try and um, elicit that contract. So they've threatened him with the mental health card isol um, and isolation when complaints are made from outside. There's a lot of people out here and this is what we're, I'm trying to get this message across. OK, everybody needs to take this very seriously that, um, you know, when complaints are made, they try to silence outside concerns by taking it out on these vulnerable individuals that are locked up in there. OK, so it's despicable. Yeah. And it's and it is, to be fair, it is, it's quite a common theme from everyone who I have interviewed, from Len Lawrence, who they he was the airline pilot, and they tried to get him down the mental health route. Um, yeah, it's very shady what's going on in our national health and the um, obviously the the legal system as well. It's yeah. So I mean, Chris, corrupt. what we're talking about here is the are the institutions under Satan's beast system. Let's be mm. quite frank; they're one, they're one and the same, and the modus operandi is uh, you know the same. Um, you know, he's been brutally assaulted twice. Once by South Yorkshire Police when he was taken, and once by prison officers at HMP Perth before being transferred with only ten minutes' notice to Greenock back in February this year. These assaults, and I think this is very important to recognise. We've seen this across the board, also in other circumstances, have involved groups of five to six officers um, on um, you know on both occasions on a man of that age that was showing no aggression. Donald is not an aggressive character, believe you me. Mm. You know, he'll, you know, and, and, and this is, um, you know, it's what it is. We're, we're seeing it. Um, you know, he's had things stolen as well. You know, um, all sorts of things stolen. Um, and um, Stolen the other, from the prison. Yeah, and yeah. the other thing that's done is he's had invasive checks also. You know, um, what they do is they, they use it as a form of demeaning you. Yeah, and actually touching, physically touching, you know, touching him, invasive checks, basically, against their own, um, you know, um, protocols, quite mm. frankly. Mm. Yeah, basically, it's another <laughs> form of abuse. Um, what it's really about is breaking his spirit. Yeah, it's him. belittling yeah. him. Yeah. It's, That's it's, it, yeah. Yeah, dehumanising yeah, dehumanizing, whichever way you want to do it. Now, this latest move to kill Marmark, um, we believe, has, is, has been to cut him off from the outside world. They're getting quite aggravated at the moment by the fact that, um, you know, this is coming to the, to the outside and, and people are, are, you know, it's gaining uh, momentum. People are seeing what's happening um, and, um, you know, they're not happy with that. So what they're trying to do is to silence him. They've, they've moved into this kill Marmark. Um, where they're threatening now to cut off all um, in all contact, telephones, um, you know, um, letters, you know, they're trying to basically blackmail him, sign, sign, or basically you're going to be isolate in isolation. Mm. You know? Oh, and the reason that they're doing this, they're trying to uh, obtain fingerprints from him. 
you know, yeah, to access facilities. Yeah, yeah, to access the facilities. It's funny you say that actually, because my daughter starts high school in September, and mm-hmm. we're given a, we're given a pack up anyway, pack lunch. But if she wanted to access school dinners, it's all biometrics. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is this is to which we say bugger off. Yeah. So Chris, what they've done is they've moved him specially to that that kind of an, a, an establishment, um, so that it can basically put the pressure on him to to do what he's going to do. But you know, um, Donald is a man that's of faith, okay, and he knows what he's doing. He knows who he is, and at the end of the day, it's much more than what you and me see. This is not physical. This is spiritual, and this is a spiritual war. Now, I know not all the listeners will be on board with that, but, you know, that is our firm belief. But at the end of the day, we stand under goodness and light, and that's what we'll continue to do. So so what is the brief backstory of how he got to be in prison? What what was the the thing that set this all off? Um, Well, yeah, so... um, I can, what I'll say first is, you know, uh, why did this happen? Um, you know, this whole thing, like you say, and really it was for commercial reasons, not justice. I think people need to forget the fact that justice is, is the issue here. All administrative courts are commercial entities with the principal aim to generate revenue. OK, that's it. All right. Justice is a byproduct, meaning that it's not the reason. All right, now they won't like to hear that, but that's the truth. There's no big difference between criminal and civil in that respect. Okay, um, so it wasn't, so it was principally to asset strip. What they did was they used a trumped up charge as a smoke screen and a kangaroo court to, to lock him up, to give them the vehicle to lock him up because they could see that he was standing under his, um, you know, he knew who he was and he was mm-hmm. standing under the, under the living man. Um, now, what they did was they joined the two courts, one in Scotland and another one in England, one criminal, what they're saying crimi- criminal, and one civil running, and they ran them at the same time, on the same date, to attempt to enforce an asset strip in England through HM Courts, using a purported criminal case as the vehicle to do so. Now, is that, now is that, that sounds like something that's very far-fetched, but believe mm-hmm. you me, this is what happened. There's no jurisdiction. People say, well, how can you do that? You know, Scotland, England, two different jurisdictions. No, no, no. no. What they did, there's no jurisdiction. Well, the United Kingdom is, is a, a corporation, and that includes Scotland, doesn't it? Absolutely. But, but for the listeners that are not aware, between there's no jurisdiction between commercial corporate entities in that way, is there? So the, the banks are behind this, you know, um, alongside a connected ex-spouse okay and the ex-spouse's motive was to benefit from all the material assets and i mean all the material assets that donald holds in relation to a divorce and the bank it was there in their benefit benefit to asset strip on her behalf um using backdoor enforcement for civil debt okay so anybody that thinks that they won't be locked up for civil debt what they do is they cook things up to cover that as a smoke screen okay mm. this is it people say i won't get locked up for this i won't get locked up for that no what, they, what they're doing is with the, the the cooking things up you know what i mean and and, and and knocking up fraudulent documents to do so right um the indictment this the, the what, which was the the criminal the, the criminal aspect of it, or what they called the criminal aspect of it, because it was all fraud, um, was um, uh, related to a disputed signature, which started in the civil courts up in Scotland, and um, in which Donald was never found guilty, because he's never produced any uh, any evidence or anything like that. You know, he's just been sort of like the rush shot over him. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They just, just marched ahead. And, and he was never found guilty, and it was over this jointly owned um, property that he had with his ex-wife, okay? That was the vehicle um, for the neighbor, and that they joined it up the courts to enable this asset strip down south. And they've used fraudulent civil instruments to asset, asset strip while he's in prison out the way. That's what's happened. Mm. Um, so um, the torturous conditions that I have mentioned to you earlier, um, are really um, for standing as a living man under God, 
Um, and so they're unable to get um, full jurisdiction over him or any jurisdiction. And he won't have a solicitor because everybody knows that a solicitor has joined you into the system, the lead you into well, yeah, it. They've all, they've all sworn they were after the Bar Guild, haven't they? And, and, and the, isn't, isn't the bench Latin or something for bank? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is yeah. all well, bank, bank commerce. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it's all it's all the same. It's there, like you say, in the vocabulary that they use. Um, but so a solicitor has never had a solicitor and never would have a solicitor. Um, and they've been unable to enforce things legitimately because if we, I mean, even anybody listening to this would know that if, that, if they had a legitimate case, okay, they would have enforced this. Um, by a bankruptcy or proceeds of crime and they've been unable to do so and um, they've had to do it um, through massive amounts of fraud fraud via um, civil instruments um, now <clears throat> you I, I'm going to sort of like um, give um, the listener a little bit of a story in brief I'd like you to bear with me on this one um, I'm just going to it'll take me about five minutes to go through it but for anybody that's in the know, this is really about really highlighting violations of due course of law and how there's been no procedure, no due course of law throughout this whole concept and whole whole mm. plan, basically, of the Donald thing, okay? Yep. So yep. if you give me just five minutes, I'll run through it. Um, and, yeah, fill your you boots. Thank you. <laughs> so he was taken on the 19th, um, sorry, 18th of January 2023 by armed police. Um, who turned up with no visible arrest warrant. Um, they uh, provided a failure to appear for a first hearing in Scotland in relation to that um, uh, indictment that I just mentioned. <clears throat> they um, took Donald without any formal arrest, okay, on the basis that he would be identified at the local court the next day, which is what normally happens. But um, there was no paperwork completed in the police station. No photographs were taken, nothing like that. Um, um, no fingerprints were taken. But he was assaulted at South York, by South Yorkshire Police in the police station. Um, and at um, 3.30 um, the following morning, he was taken by a custody wa wagon, 3.30, directly up to the Scottish court, um, a Scottish court, put in a sheriff court cell, with no process of identity, no photos, no fingerprints. And he was sentenced to a seven day lie down through a cell door by a judge because they, they couldn't get jurisdiction. They didn't even take him into the, into mm. the court. Okay. Um, and he was taken from there to HMP Perth. <clears throat> Donald was informed by prison guards three days later that he was fully committed. There was no court session to establish that. So what that actually means is that anybody will tell you that before they can put you on remand, you have to have a court session to establish the reasons for that. Now, Donald had never had any prior convictions of nothing, nothing on him at all. So it was they would not, never have been able to just bang him in prison like that. But they did without any, um, as I say, any um, due court, yeah, due process or court hearing. Now, remember, they, they so-called arrested him, even though they didn't arrest him because it wasn't done properly, um, for, on the basis of him not attending a first hearing. So he was presented with a refreshed indictment, just a fraudulent indictment, and, and was told that there would be a first hearing, a diet is a hearing in Scotland, in February of last year. Um, and he was told this by the prison. <clears throat> um, and, and that was the motive for the arrest, for him failing to appear. Well, when it got to that date, the prison didn't take him to it. So he didn't even go to the thing. He was still in the prison. OK, and what they did was he put a plea in for him for guilty, even though he'd never had the chance to say anything that had been in the not nothing. They put a plea in for guilty and used the, the, that vehicle to um, engage an advocate employed by the court, not by Donald, they never spoke to anybody, never contracted with anybody, but they used that as a vehicle to employ this advocate. Um, and, and this advocate wrote to, to him um, or wrote to the, to the legal fiction saying that basically due to the nature of the offences, he um, they had been employed. And Donald obviously never, you know, contracted at all. So they did that, and they never took him to, to this this thing, which is what they'd arrested him for. 
So then three months later, um, they'd be put him through a kangaroo trial. And I call it a kangaroo trial because it wasn't a real trial. It was, there was no due course of law. Um, Don, Donald was only informed of this trial through this solicitor but, um, to which he had never spoken. No paperwork was ever produced by the Crown itself. Everybody knows that if, if, it's a, it's, if it's something real, you would get communication from the Crown itself. But Donald never got any communication. It was always through third parties. Mm. So they took him to this trial, um, which lasted a few days. And, and on, on the, all the time, the court failed to ascertain any identity. So what I mean by that is when every time they tried to ask him what his name was, and he said, you know, he basically denied that that was him. It wasn't him. I'm not that legal entity. So they failed to ascertain his identity. And uh, basically, um, Donald never stood in the dark. Um, any any um, uh, com communication that it, that it had was in stair um, in the st stairwell. Sorry, so it wasn't actually in the court itself. It was actually in the, in the doorway of it. So it wasn't in the boundary of the court um, throughout the whole procedure of this this, this trial. Um, ne not in the dock or anything like that. Now, when the sheriff didn't get jurisdiction over him, like when she, when asking the name, okay. Um, she read an act over, over him and basically had him removed immediately downstairs throughout the whole trial. So basically this thing was going on in his absence and he knew nothing about it, none of the evidence, nothing that was ever, you know, disclosed to him, he knew nothing. Because he was basically locked downstairs while it was going on. The people, the GOA staff who look after the prisoners down there, manage all that, said they'd never seen anything like it in their lives. They said, um, you know, um, they couldn't believe that the sheriff never answered any questions and they couldn't believe the treatment. He actually said, this is torture, you've been tortured. Um, and he was also blackmailed by this so-called advocate. Um, if, if he contracted, then he um, then bail would be granted. I mean, that says it all. Them offering bail in the middle of a trial, I think, tells you everything that you need to know, doesn't it? Pretty much. So they then got, went to this verdict, and when it got to this verdict, the the, um, the sheriff said, um, "You were found guilty." Um, Donald um, and, and and sentencing was to be de deferred, deferred. Sorry, pending background reports. So everybody knows that to be convicted and sentenced, there has to be background reports in place. All the prison officers know it. Everybody knows it. But he didn't stand in the dock and was never asked by the sheriff at any time during the trial to stand in the dock. Um, so what happened was it, it was um, basically the verdict was guilty, according to her, um, and they con continued to fraudulently defer this sentencing until the 24th of July 2023. So basically they had him locked up at Perth for three months pending um, background reports. Um, for, for sentencing. Now, anybody knows, again, anybody that's been in that system will tell you that they never defer sentencing for that amount of time. It's always only deferred for a couple of weeks maximum, even if you've got a real um, long criminal record. But they deferred it for about, about three months, I think it was, um, pending these background reports. But no contact, which is key here, was of any description was made by any social worker to Donald um, during this period relating to background reports. So it was just another excuse to keep him locked down. Um, okay, so that was that. So eventually it got to the sentencing date um, and um, he, he was stood at the top of the stairwell, again, not inside the dock. He was not asked to stand in the dock. Um, and again, all his, any questions were ignored. Um, and the sheriff um, was heard to say there was no mitigating factors here and a recess of 10 minutes to deliberate the sentence. Donald was taken back to the cell from outside the courts and at 11 o'clock brought back up again. He was taken to the court and the procurator fiscal failed to identify him. So even at the sentencing, they were still asking him, are you that name? And obviously he said, no, I'm not. So this is sentencing now. Mm. Of course, we know this is actually, uh, uh, you know, it's preposterous, it's pathetic, you know, really. but that's what they did. So they're still asking his name, even at, the, at that point. He did not stand, as I said, in the dock at any point. The sheriff then proceeded, and this is when we talk about the two joined in the kangaroo courts, to discuss costs and civil court proceedings, which were taking place at a hearing in South Yorkshire at exactly the same time. 10 o'clock, same date, um, and it was associated 
with debts purported to have been accrued through HM Courts and Family Court in England associated with the divorce. So they were bringing that into this Scottish court, what was something in what should have been in another jurisdiction. Mm. Okay. The sheriff admitted in open court that the procurator fiscal had been communicating directly with the court in Doncaster over seizure of assets. So they were actually admitting that they were colluding. Okay, there was no, you know, you know, it's actually out there. Um, and this obviously this had nothing to do with the supposed indictment, which was over the um, over the house in, in Scotland. The sheriff then reported to give a sentence to the legal entity, and I say presumed legal entity, of four and a half years. No name was mentioned, actually. She just went, you are. And the sheriff told this court she had no choice but to impose a custodial sentence due to the lack of background reports and she knows nothing about that man. So she'd been in the prison for three months and she knew nothing about him. But they knew enough to be able to strip his assets apparently, where, you know what I mean? Mm. The whole thing was absolutely ludicrous. And, and but you know, if it wasn't for the fact that this man suffered to this degree. Now, since this document was completed and, you know, and we've talked about this, we've been informed by um, the principal defence witness who they contacted that she was forced, okay, and deceived into presenting her testimony as a prosecution witness only and not a defence witness. So they got her, they didn't have, they didn't have defence, they only had prosecution. They made us what was supposed to be a defence witness go on the prosecution list and surprise, surprise, guess what happened to her statement? It got withdrawn. It got withdrawn and trashed. Thank you. So everybody needs to be aware of these key points. Anybody listening of just what these these people are capable of. Okay. Um, you know. I don't I'm even sure think we can call them people, can we? No, no. Exactly. Let's call them entities, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're like the father, aren't they? Yeah. So everybody needs to be aware of the key points here. Number one, custodial four and a half year sentence with no social worker report, impossible under Scott statute. Okay, um, number two, never spoken to an advocate that was supposed to be representing representing the legal entity. I don't think so either, do you? Um, no documentation relating to the charges, productions, conviction, sentence, etc. He's never seen anything about it, so he still doesn't really know what the, what 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 the what they've done. Um, you know, um, and joined her in up courts, which was supposed to be in different jurisdictions. Mm. Um, you know, it goes on and on and on and on. You know, how could a, a legal entity, um, which is what they're, they're um, you know, handling here, be in two places at the same time? You know, it just doesn't happen, does it? It cannot no. happen. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out who the victim is here. <laughs> you, you as, as in no victim, no crime. Well, exactly. You're right. This is the thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's you're understanding what we're saying here, aren't you? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, so that was it, really. Um. What else? Um. Yeah. So. So. So what? The other thing is, sorry, yeah. Chris. Um. Debt cannot be used either as a justification for any custodial sentence, not on statute. But obviously, what we know, what they're doing, don't we? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's key. So. Yeah. <laughs> nice glasses. Um, so I have to ask then. Obviously, you've been doing. A, I'm assuming this isn't the first interview you've done, or is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. okay. Yeah. Perhaps you should fix your glasses next time. Um, <laughs> so how? <laughs> so apart from this interview, then how is it going? How are you campaigning? What are you doing to try and rectify his situation? Um, well, basically, um, I've, I've got to be honest, um, you know, um, Donald has a private trust and the trustees have um, been working tirelessly here. I mean, I'm, I'm, so I'm here, I'm just, um, you know, spokeswoman today. It could be any one of us um, next time. At the end of the day, we're, you know, there's lots of people working here on behalf of Donald because we know at the end of the day, the, the, um, you know, the, the fraud that's been enacted and the criminality, quite honestly. And this is the whole point. This is what we want to be getting out here. And we've been working at putting on notice these culpable parties, um, you know, Scots courts, HM courts and tribunals, all corporate entities, 
as you know, banks and public bodies all working together, you know, with the businesses at the end of the day. And that's what people need to recognise. Um, and, um, you know, they're involved in the, this fraudulent asset strip and the prisons, etc. I think it's important to recognise as well um, that, you know, what we're doing here is not about um, material possessions per se. It was never about that. And I say this to every single um, hit person that comes up. Man or woman, I don't even like the word person, forgive me, but, you know, any man or woman that comes here and say it's not about the material assets, again, they say it's nothing to do with that. This is about principle, it's about standing up for, for righteousness at the end of the day. This this is greed, it's evil, and it's people will sell, sell, literally sell their souls for money. Mm. And, you know, this world's out of control now, and this is why we're where we are. Um, you know, we've got a full body of evidence. Some of the most damning evidence is on their own paperwork. That's um, yeah. It's shocking, but not surprising, which in yeah. itself is shocking. <laughs> I think, um, you know, um, a point that's just been made is um, we're very worried about the fact that they're trying to cut off um, communication with, um, with Donald mm. in there because they're not enjoying what, or relishing. These people work in the shadows, if they're listening, they work in the dark, they do not like the light. No. They can't see the light. No, and true. the light of God is shining upon them now. Mm. And, you know, this will be exposed, mm. you know. And, um, yeah, and this is what it is. And I think everybody, it doesn't matter whether you're biblical, whether you're, I think everybody's recognising in some part of their being now that this is spiritual. There's much more to this world that meet that meets the eye, and we've all we're all waking. We're awakening. Mm. Some of us are a little bit more than others, and some of us further along the road. But that's the case. Well, apparently, it only takes like a, about five or ten percent of the population in order to wake up for it to have a mass effect. Hello. Yeah. Hi, I'm Alison. <laughs> um, I'd just like to add. Um, I think two questions you have to ask yourself is is Whatever we're doing, is it moral and is it ethical? Because mm. these are these are two key issues, key, you know, two key, key aspects mm. of uh, what what decisions we make in life and and what we choose to do with it. And it's always a choice. We always have a choice of a situation we're in, and you know. That's... No, absolutely. No, we all have, we all we were all born with a moral <laughs> compass. That's right, yeah, yeah, we like exactly right. We all know when we're doing something wrong, and this is this is it. And how these people can have done what they've done to to, to Donald. I mean, it's amazing, really. And you know, when you see him, it's 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 shameful to them, and it's going to become very very shameful because it, it's like it's it's just over us of it. You know, what I mean, I think that's it's almost like it. It's, I, I call this a black comedy. But for, it's, it's, if it wasn't for the fact that there's real pain and going on here and real, you know, um, real damage being caused, it's all it's, it's almost comedic. The ex, the the extremity of it, it really is, and I think well, everybody yeah. agree with is. that. It's yeah. like yes, prime minister mixed with the one. Oh, what was a prison comedy with uh, the late? Mm. Which was porridge. porridge? Yeah, porridge. porridge. Yeah. yeah, it's like a mishmash of that, but with yeah. evil in, intertwined. Now, obviously, I know you haven't seen him for a while, and I know he's obviously got his faith, which obviously yeah. must keep him a little bit strong. But do you know generally how he's doing? Well, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's, it's very hard for him. It's a very, it's a very, very, um, you know loving sentient being so anybody that's deprived of love in, 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 in an environment where people are so unempathetic cruel unmerciful just you know the, the worst um, traits of humanity possible then you know it's very very difficult for somebody to um, you know feel that but he feels a love from us all out here um, and in, and he has his faith, and he knows that he's standing up for righteousness, and 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 he's prepared to do that, and will continue to do that. that because this isn't just about um, Donald per se. I think this is um, for 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 everybody out there that wants to stand under the light as that living man or woman, and not become um, you know the corporate dead entity fiction that you know that they're, they're trying to force on everybody. You know what I mean? Um, and, and boy, do they try try the best. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you, you've just got to stick to it, stick with it, 
um, at the end of the day. And, you know, they'll, 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 they'll stitch you up, they'll, do, they'll go to any lane, quite frankly, and we've proven that. We've proven yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Every, every, time, every time the shoes are brought up of our concerns with health and safety, then they punish him. For yeah, them. yeah, well, we've had that as well, yeah. Just generally a physical, physically fit gentleman liked his exercise mm -hmm. for walking. So physically, we've got concerns, especially about his nutritional uh, needs as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's a beautiful person, um, you know, and, you know, like the gentleman's just said there, I don't even like that word, our friend's just the said man, there, the man, the man. our man there's just said, um, quite frankly, it's, you know, we raise concerns, they take it, it's like having a child that you love, in a kidnap situation, the gun to its head, yeah. and they're like saying "back off" or else it gets a bullet. And I don't care if they're listening because mm -hmm. that's what it's that's like, what and that's what they're doing. It's been constant, yeah, and it's been constant like that. So you can imagine what it's like at the end of the day. Now, to finish, really, to conclude, I want to say to everybody that the UK judicial system is corrupt, as you already know, probably to the core and it's sinister, it's insidious, and it's repulsive, and that they use false documentation, They're not just using it in the criminal courts or civil courts, they're using it in all aspects across the board. They're using trumped-up charges. I'm sure you've come across it in your discussions. Mm -hmm. Kangaroo courts. This is not crime conspiracy mm -hmm. stuff in, it, um, in crime novels, conspiracy theory. It's not that. This is reality. Mm -hmm. Well, it's um, conspiracy. It's just not a theory. No, exactly, love, yeah, and it's a system gone rogue, mm -hmm. quite frankly, um, you know, and I think the thing that in our case is the reality and the criminality of how the system tortures those who choose to stand out of the system, okay, that's key. Um, this, this experience here is a man illegally and unlawfully kidnapped, standing under his Christian values, Christian values, what I mean is, you know, you know his belief. In mm. what's happening in the world now, and it's 19 months of torture, intimidation, and coercion, um, principally under SPS, Scottish Prison Service, whose motto is, and I'll say it, mm. unlocking potential, transforming lives. <laughs> That's what they think they do. Okay, <laughs> this is the truth, this it's is. lip service. That's the truth to cover the reality, and that yeah. and, and that's it, really, lovely, but yeah. So, well, thank you very much for sharing what's been going on. It's such a horrible situation. Um, I mean, on a positive note, I honestly do genuinely believe people are waking up to what the system is. And I think we're seeing that not so much on the mainstream news, obviously, but we are seeing that on lots of videos where bailiffs, police, all that are being, you know, they're not having an easy time of it because people are waking up. And so I think that's that's the bit of hope that I have and I, that I hold on to in thinking that things are going to change. I don't know when they're going to change, but I don't think that we can continue with this much um, awareness amongst people for things not to change. Yeah. And it's a bit like the 100 monkeys, yeah. you know. Yeah. And once the 100 monkeys have learned something, the rest know it just yeah. like it's born in them. So yeah. just keep strong, um, keep the faith. You're more than welcome to come back on here at another time to update me with um, how this uh, this plot is unwinding. And I think that's a really good word you've used there, plot. Mm. Okay, yeah. because that's exactly what it was. Okay, <laughs> it was a plot. Mm. Yeah, but by the people that are supposed to be enacting justice, or you know what the British people think is enacting justice, they were the ones that were plotting. That's quite mm. frankly mm. the truth. Yeah, okay, and well, that's like, what we well, like you said plotting. earlier when I spoke with you, you know, at yeah. the end of the day, it's a case of that these people aren't these civil service people don't work for us. They're not working on behalf of us. No, no, they're not. Of course no, not. We know what. The, yeah. yeah. No. no, 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 there's no, you can't, no, if, that, that's it. So, I mean, I think the key here is that this needs to be, um, you know, people need to be aware and people need to be shouting at what they're actually doing to the brothers and sisters in these establishments. You know what I mean? We need to be, um, you know, um, getting it out there. 
because it's not just him. What what they're doing is um, basically the torturing the, the people. One, the ones who yeah. set the system, they bring them as ghosts. Yeah, so they yeah. Don't believe they're in there. Yeah, yeah. So they, feed off the, they feed off mm. of that, don't they? Mm. They do. So this is it, and you know, um, yeah. It's but what the, the thing is, they don't like. Um, it's like these things. It's all in the shadows, isn't it? It's in the darkness, and you know what I mean. That necessarily the the, uh, the key. They don't. It doesn't. They don't like being brought into the light. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is what we need to be doing. Bringing this, in, making this a discussion. Yeah, making the, you know a point so people do become more informed about it. Uh, you know, um, yeah. and, um, well, hopefully this podcast yeah. will help with that. I'm sure yeah. there'll be many a supportive comment in the comment section once this airs. Um, thank you to everybody at home who has watched this. I hope you've um, not found it entertaining, but I hope you found it educational. Um, mm. I'm sure many of my um, listeners are quite up on this, given the amount of things that I report on anyway. But yeah, thank you very much for coming on and everyone at home, look after yourselves, take care and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.